Welcome again to Starting Different. I'm Dean Minuto. I created this series to help you apply the brain's own shortcuts to being more effective. In your communications, and in your interactions, I refer to the series as Starting Different. What if there was a button we could push to be more effective in our communications, to work smarter using brain science? And there is. I'm going to consolidate for you five research-proven shortcuts from the world of brain science. They're actually referred to as cognitive biases, and I've created an acronym around the word SMART. SMART is as SMART does. There are behaviors that fall into each of these five shortcuts. Five, supply, which is the most powerful. Motion, which is the second most powerful. Asking, which is about framing. Relationships, which I'll just refer to as relate as we move forward in this series. And effective behaviors around creating trust in a relationship. So today I'm gonna to focus on two, the, the two most powerful. I'm gonna focus on supply, which research suggests if you apply the correct behaviors can increase your effectiveness four times, four X. Compliance to a request goes up four times when we apply properly the forcing mechanisms, forcing mechanisms, easier to say, forcing mechanisms of supply that I'm gonna share with you today. They are limited numbers, deadlines, penalties, but I'm gonna to talk to you about a very specific way to do that. The second behavioral bias that people have is around this word motion. A thing in motion tends to stay in motion. And I'm gonna share with you a tip that research suggests will increase compliance to your requests by two. In other words, will double compliance to requests. I'm also gonna share with you a tool in terms of you plotting a GPS, which I'm gonna to refer to as your gain pain scale for any behavior that you and your team apply. By the way, these things apply to how you influence yourself, how you influence your children, how you influence your customers, your team, even in the area of getting discounts from vendors. These are what I refer to as the essentials, the essentials of yes, behavior six is around effective communication. So I think it's important that we start with a definition. Effective means producing the desired or intended result. In other words, getting to what you want to get to. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you a tool and I'm gonna go through those two biases. What I'd first like you to do is take out two blank sheets of paper. Because on one blank sheet of paper, I'm gonna have you draw a tool, a GPS that you can use in your interactions. On the other blank sheet of paper, I'm gonna go through supply and motion and give you some very specific tips on how you and your team can apply them this week to be more effective in your communications. So on the first sheet of paper, I'd like you to draw a line down the center and a line across the middle. The most important thing for us to focus on with this GPS is what should be at the center of everything we do. And I'm gonna represent that center with the Greek symbol delta, meaning difference. We are here to make a difference. We're here to give people what they most need, what's in it for them, that's their gain, and we're here to make it easy for them. That means to reduce their pain. So if I were to, if I were to turn this uh, screen into a, a chalkboard, we have four quadrants that are now being plotted on this screen. We have high gain and low gain, and we have high pain and low pain. Now, if you've taken my Yescalate courses, you'll remember that anyone you want a yes from, they have only two goals in life. Their brain has only two goals. The first is to stay alive. That's high gain. The second is to use as little energy as possible in staying alive. That's low pain. That's why I refer to this as quadrant one. Anything you, you, you think about doing in terms of a communication this week, I wanna ask you, are you maximizing the gain for the person you are doing this for? Are you letting them know immediately what's in it for them? And are, are you doing it in a way that's easy for them to process? This is the magic quadrant right here. This is the quadrant the universe wants you in. If you're a religious person, this is the quadrant that God wants you in. God wants you doing things that are high gain and are easy for people, making people's lives easier. 
So now that I've given you this GPS as a little bit of a framework, let me, let me clear the screen here and I'm going to walk you through a couple of smart behaviors that are absolutely in quadrant one. So on your second sheet of paper, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write out the word smart across the top of the sheet of paper. Today, I'm gonna to focus on two of the components of SMART. I said SMART stands for supply, motion, ask, relate, and trust. And in, in my videos, I absolutely go through all five. Today, we're gonna to go through two. We're gonna go through the first, which is supply, which will increase compliance to a request by four times. And we're gonna go through motion, which will double compliance to our request. So let's talk about supply first for a moment. A thing that's in limited supply gets people to pay attention. Supply is limited numbers, deadlines, and penalties. Psychologists call these elements forcing mechanisms. You've heard this phrase probably since you were a kid, work expands to fill the time allotted. In other words, when we schedule something, that's a forcing mechanism. You probably also heard this phrase, if it's important, it gets an appointment. Well, what does this have to do with? This has to do with the supply of the most important thing that our brain is focused on. That's its attention. So let me go, before I go into motion, let me go back up here and let me turn this into a whiteboard again. Attention is the most precious commodity that anyone you're trying to influence has. And over time, their attention cannot remain high the entire time you're interacting with them. In fact, psychologists have documented what's now referred to as the curve of human attention. It says that over time, people pay attention in a predictable way. They pay high attention at the beginning of an event, and they pay high attention at the end of an event. So I want you to remember a couple of things. Number one, you have two moments of power in any interaction with your customer. The first time they come in to see you, the first couple of moments, and then at the end of the presentation when they're leaving are your two moments of power. I want you to be most aware of the beginning of an interaction. And the military has a phrase they use, it's called bottom line up front or bluff. Before you send an email, before you start a presentation, I want you to look through your whole presentation, look through your whole email, find the most important comp component and move it to the front. People are significantly more likely to be paying attention at the beginning of your interactions with them than they are at the end of your interactions with them. Now, when I said these were forcing mechanisms, supply is a forcing mechanism, motion is, motion is a forcing mechanism that we're gonna get to in a minute, people don't like being forced to do anything. So remember that limited numbers, deadlines, and penalties are forcing mechanisms, but they trigger a button in the human brain that looks like this. You've probably had a car dealer say, you only have till Saturday to give me your answer. Well, in the absence of hearing a valid reason, our brain flags that request as BS. I want you to know, psychologists tell us that the trigger is actually a word if we want to increase compli compliance. It's the word because. Because has power in that it implies there is a valid reason. I need your answer by Saturday because that's the end of the manufacturer's sales quarter and here's what prices are changing to on Saturday. Always use the because. If you're going to be setting deadlines using limited numbers or penalties, make sure you give the reason. And you'll remember when you were a kid, you asked your mom if you could do something, she said no, you asked why, and she said most likely because I said so. Because has been a trigger for us our whole lives. So. Forcing mechanisms around supply can increase compliance by four times. Never leave a meeting without setting a deadline for what's happening next. Never leave a meeting without letting people know the because in terms of why they need that follow-up. All right, now let's get into the second cognitive bias that I said I'd cover today, which is motion. We know the cognitive bias is called commitment and consistency. When people start doing something, they're significantly more likely to continue to do it. They actually feel pressure to do this. 
You've heard the phrase, a thing in motion tends to stay in motion. Well, it's all about getting people started, getting people participating with you. And the trigger phrase that I want you to consider for the week is this, please take out a pen and a piece of paper. In other words, remind yourself to get the person writing things down. Handwriting activates the visual cortex in the brain. It actually imprints the brain visually. The CEO organization I do so much speaking for, Vistage, has something, a tool they've used for decades called a personal action summary. And down on the bottom it says, when you write down the actions or when you commit to writing, you more than double the likelihood you will follow through. Now we've known this since we were kids, since your mom, your grandmother, your aunt told you to make a shopping list before you go grocery shopping. Handwriting activates the brain. It actually does three things. The first thing it does is it gets that person to participate with you. So you're not doing this to them, you are doing something with them in collaboration. The second thing taking out a pen and a piece, or piece of paper does is gets them to repeat what was just said. Repetition is the mother of learning. The more we repeat something, the more likely we will be to remember it. And the third thing it does is it actually visually imprints the brain. And visuals get to the brain 30 times faster than words. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be building this acronym in the weeks and months ahead in the videos that, that you watch, SMART leaders, supply, motion, ask, relate, and trust. That's who we wanna be. And there's things we can do, behaviors, that will help our customers and ourselves make better decisions because we want to have a difference in their lives. We wanna produce extraordinary results. So today's behavior, Behavior six was around effective communications. I walked through the first two components of SMART because what you do makes a difference. Focus on your company's values, link them to your behaviors, and optimize your customer's experience. I hope you enjoyed our time together today. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.